So what do you do when you really want a pickup truck, but you also really want a Tesla? Well, you do the best of both worlds and you make a custom Tesla pickup truck. And that's exactly what our guest Simone Yetch did a few years ago. She's here with us live from Los Angeles and she's here to tell us all about it. Simone, welcome to Gizmodo Talks. Thank you. So let's just kind of get right into it. Um, I have to simply know, what was the motivation to build your own Tesla pickup truck? And for our viewers at home, it's called Truckla, Tesla truck. So tell us all about it. I think it was a, an abundance of time, stubbornness, and mm, stupidity. I don't know. Uh, I just really wanted, I mean, this was back in 2018 and I really wanted an electric pickup truck. And back then, like we didn't have the options that we have now. So I was like, maybe we could just make our own. So, you know, I mean, having a YouTube channel grants me a lot of freedom to kind of follow my whims and, and humor them. And I definitely went hard on that one. So walk me through the process. I, I'm not someone who's good with tools or machinery or cars or any of that. Like, can you can you condense the process of of how to make a, a custom pickup truck? And like, what were the problems you ran into while you were doing it? As long as everybody promised to not use this as a tutorial. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, it was about a year of planning of just like, as like a feasibility study of like, could we actually do this? Kind of trying to get as many blueprints of the car. I remember my teammates and I, as soon as we saw Model 3, we kind of ran up and like started measuring them and being like, oh, but what if we have the cut line here? So it was definitely a lot of planning. And then a month that was just a flurry of work. I mean, one of the big things you want to make sure is to stabilize the car because when you remove a big part of the car, um, I mean, it's just physically not going to move the same way. So just making sure that we reinforced everything so that the car kind of wouldn't taco in on itself, which would be bad for everyone involved. And I saw that you still have Truckla and you just gave it a huge facelift. Um, what what happened in the, I guess, five years that you had Truckla where you, you had to kind of go back to the drawing board and update some of it? I mean, not that much. I think we worked so hard on the car and then when it was out in the world, it was kind of like a big sigh of relief of just like, okay, <laughs> we did it. And then the project went into a lull. Um, and then, yeah, recently I just put in a bunch more work into it. But yeah, I mean, I was kind of just using it as my car and driving her around. That's awesome. So you were you were actually using it to like haul equipment and it was so it was incredibly practical is what I'm hearing. <laughs> incredibly is a strong word. Uh, yes, <laughs> practical. I mean, I think I've used the lumber rack more than anything, really. But yeah, I mean, she's picked up a lot of plywood, a lot of wood, bought a couch from Ikea and hauled it all back. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. No, she was she was living her a, a good a good pickup truck life. I love that. And I saw you were recently experimenting with like developing a, a rover based charger that was based on a plan that Tesla teased like a few years ago of like, kind of like a snake like charger. How did that kind of turn out? It's very different, the things you do for a video and the things that actually you end up using in your everyday life. I think this one is not ready for me to use it in my everyday life, but okay. it's a proof of concept. And I think it's a really cool, cool idea and something I would love a, a more finished version of. Like, I think this was V.0. I think okay. V7 is going to be great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looked really promising, and you guys did 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 killer work with it. Um, and so mostly killer work, not laughing while it was like dry humping my car. <laughs> yeah, it was like vaguely sexual, but I mean, it's but, vaguely I mean, really. <laughs> so I, I mean, the elephant in the room is is uh, I think you, like many people, were a little unenthused with the reveal of the Cybertruck, especially when Elon Musk threw like a giant ball bearing at the window, promising it wouldn't break, and then it eventually did break. Um, do you see yourself moving towards a Cybertruck anytime soon, or are you going to just ride the Truckla until the wheels fall off? I I, I stand Truckla. I also feel like the <laughs> Cybertruck is kind of like if you turned wearing sunglasses indoors into a vehicle, like, 
you just really <laughs> need to take yourself very seriously if you're driving around. And uh, yeah, definitely not keen. Truckla is one example of, of something you do really well, which is like take a really kind of over your head engineering project and break it down into really good parts and you do them all really well. And I think that's best exemplified by your store, which is the Yetch store, which has a bunch of different things for sale. You have screwdriver rings, you have a puzzle that's all white, um, you have the, the infamous 365 daily calendar. I want to know what you can tell me about the Yetch store. Like, what, what was the motivation behind, you know, building the Yetch store and, and selling these products? I think, I mean, there's a lot of different motivations. One that I've been really interested in product design for a long time, but I didn't really think I was cool enough to do it. And then you're like, oh, no, I can, I can probably do it. But I think the, the, the thing that really made me realize that like, oh, I need to diversify my business is because I had a brain tumor, which I can't recommend. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Two, two out of 10 stars on the whole experience. But it was right. definitely a wake up call of like, when you work as an influencer, which I hate referring to myself as, but it's kind of like the core of my business. If I'm not well enough to be in front of a camera or on a stage, like everything stops. And I'm like, I need to do something else as well. And also like being a YouTuber hasn't really felt like the end goal for me. So I was like, okay, but then I can use it as a tool to do something else that I wanted to do and starting a product business where some of the things I build on my YouTube channel, I can turn into products, mm -hmm. which just like the, felt like the perfect way for me to go. Um, granted it's, very painful yeah. it's so painful and I'm like as somebody who's terrified of disappointing people mm -hmm. I'm like how did I get into one of the most cumbersome business models <laughs> and that involves customer service and mm -hmm. factories and but yeah I mean I'm, I'm even with that I am very happily surprised that I really enjoy the work and we have like three new products in the pipeline that would probably be out in the next two years Ooh. that I'm pumped about. Yeah, we kind of started with a really small roster of products and we have the ones that I feel are more the actual direction that we want to go uh, coming That's up soon. That's awesome. Can you give us any teasers at all? One of them is a coat hanger that I'm fucking pumped. I've been working on this oh, coat hanger cool. design for three years. That's awesome. And I'm just pumped about it. I don't know. That's I didn't, awesome. um, yeah, a lot of it is just like remakes of everyday objects and improvements. Right. Maybe well, it's like, improvement it's, is a generous way of phrasing it, but like, I think there different are improvements. Take and they're like products that marry like design with practicality. Like you have like these dice that you can roll to get inspired to make something. You have like literally like rings that marry each other that are like screwdriver and, and screw. Like I think you bridge a gap that's really interesting. And my mind can only run so far with, with coat hanger and the, the scope of the Yetch store. So I'm really excited to see what's coming out. Um, yeah. So I wanna zoom out a little bit and talk about your YouTube career, which has been several years long. You've done a lot of things. And I think you kind of have a few different eras. You have your like shitty robot era, and then you have your like truckla engineering era. And now you're kind of in this like design era where you're making uh, chandeliers with plants that you can water and you know, a, a, a chair for you and, and your, and your adorable little three-legged pup, yeah. Um, and so I wanna just kinda ask you, like looking back at, at your, your time on the internet and YouTube and even broader and like designing, like how does that feel? Like that you've sort of jumped to so many different beats and done so much? I mean, the thing is, it doesn't feel like much because you're so in the middle of it and I'm always feeling like you know, the sense of dread that <laughs> I feel like I'm always on the downhill where I'm like, no, everything's okay. gonna go to shit now. So it's more like a, a, a yeah, a constant sense of dread rather than like, wow, look at that. I made, I did good. Yeah. Um, but it's really, I mean, if it's something I'm proud of is that I did let myself pivot so much, it would have been very easy to stay in the robot era because it was right. something that worked really well. 
and that people really liked and I could have kept on doing that. But as soon as I started losing interest in it, I was like, no, I want to, I want it to be things that I'm genuinely excited about. And if that means that I lose some audience members and maybe I'll find some new ones, like that's fine. Like at the core of it, it's this like genuine enthusiasm for the things I'm doing. And recently mm -hmm. it's been a lot of like, yeah, art and design and problem solving. I mean, the project I'm currently working on is I'm making a, uh, I'm rebuilding a robot arm, but completely out of stained glass. Oh, okay. I don't know. And that I think like is more just a weird marrying of two objects that I like and like yeah. an art exploration or something. Sure. And it's like, I don't think I would have let myself do that before. But now I'm like, I, I, I think of my channel as kind of a journal of my curiosities and, and, and things I want to explore. That's awesome. I think that's a great like way to be. And so with that kind of upcoming project of a robot arm made of uh, stained glass, when you look back, are there any projects that failed miserably that you didn't wind up uploading? You document your failures really effectively, I think, but I wonder if there's any projects that were just like so beyond repair, you're just like, I can't even upload these, it's it's not happening. Honestly, no, I think most of it, because I feel like the, the, the ceiling's pretty tall or the bar is yeah. pretty low, rather. <laughs> Both. Uh, so I feel like most of the attempts make it into or turn into some sort of content. Of course, there are projects that I rejected at an earlier stage. I mean, I have a long list of, of ideas, but I've never really gone anywhere. But I, okay. I think I try to document both the spectacular failure, failures and also the failures that are kind of just like a meh. So my last question for you, and you touched on this a little bit, and it is sort of a a big question. As both a creator and a designer slash engineer, what is your mission statement? Oh. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> I mean, the tagline that we've had for the Yet store is unique solutions to everyday problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that has kind of been the core. I mean, that, that has like followed me throughout the years on YouTube, even in the shitty robot area, like those solutions were unique yeah. to everyday problems. And it's just, kind of rethinking the world around me and realizing that it's very malleable. Like almost all the objects that you have around you, somebody kind of just made up and you can be one of those people who makes things up. You have a couple more videos coming out. You've got some new products in the Yetch store coming out. I mean, do you have any other pro uh, projects that you want to plug? I mean, the stuff I should plug is the Yet Store stuff, but genuinely what I've been really excited about is I, I've made this hat that has a model train track that goes around it. So I can have a little model train that goes around my head. And I'm very cool. excited about that. Yeah, it's not gonna be That's a full brilliant. YouTube video. It's probably just gonna be like a little TikTok or like YouTube short, uh, cool. but I'm very, very excited about that. And then I'm also working on a pilot episode for a show that's about everyday objects. Ooh, uh, that's yeah. very cool. So cool. Th those are the things that kind of get me really excited about waking up in the morning, which is a good that's thing awesome. in life. So you've got a lot on your plate, it sounds. Where can people find you? At, at Simone Yatch or Gertz, <laughs> any, anywhere, pretty much. Cool, yeah. awesome. Simone, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. For having me. Yeah, of course, anytime. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out other Gizmodo videos here on YouTube.